Hey guys, welcome to another dog vlog. In today's video, I'm going to share the tips on how to introduce a new puppy to an existing dog. I'm gonna take you inside my mom's house. Guys, admire how beautiful my mom's front porch is because she recently just adopted a brand new little puppy at eight weeks old and I'm staying with her for a little bit to help out and I have two adult 60 pound high energy dogs. So I'm gonna show you exactly, literally show you step by step what we did to get them introduced and now they're BFFs. So let's jump into this video, right? Meow. So for the first hint, hi Ben, hi Finn, I'm just gonna jump into it. The first hint of what we use that really made this work is what you see right here. Uh, Mr. Wally, what do we do if we want attention? Yes, we sit. Good job, Wallace. So the very first thing to set the puppy and my dogs up for success before they met was set up these baby gates. So we have several baby gates throughout my mom's house. We have this one, we have that one, and then we have one all the way over here in the kitchen. And these are set up strategically. We also have a door buddy installed in my mom's bedroom door. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. But essentially what we did is before the puppy came home, huh Wally, before you were even in the picture, we figured out the main spots where my mom spends her time. One is the living room area, the other is the kitchen area, and then the final is in the back room office. And what that did was allow the puppy and the dogs to coincide in the same house without ever having direct interaction. So in the beginning, this was really helpful to keep my mom's cat safe, to keep the puppy safe, and to keep my dogs to have a little bit of distance because this one, especially Mr. Finnegan Ender, is very playful and he is not a gentle player. And so we wanted to make sure that when he played with the puppy, especially when we first brought him home at eight weeks old, that Finnegan wasn't too uh, intense in his play, which he was. And so I'll show you what we did to fix that. And now they play together all the time, which again, I'll show you guys what that looks like in a moment. Good job, Finnegan, yes. Wally, what else did we set up before you came home? We set up Wally's crate, and I'll show you how this is really effective when introducing a dog and a puppy. And for those of you not familiar, this is the Diggs crate. I am obsessed, in my opinion, it is the best crate for small dogs, medium dogs. They are coming out with a larger version. This is the medium. I'm obsessed for several reasons. The video all in this crate is linked down below, and there are special links for you. Bringing a new puppy into your home when you already have existing pets, whether it be a dog or a cat, can be stressful for everyone. Are some dogs totally cool with it? Some cats totally cool with it? Yes, absolutely. But many times it can be very stressful. And so to avoid that stress and to keep everyone safe, I like to set up safe barriers. I call them safe spaces. And the reason I set it up all before the puppy got here is because I didn't want these strange looking things, you know, a crate and play pens and baby gates, they're not necessarily the most normal thing for a dog who's not used to seeing them. So I wanted them set up and have the animals get used to them before puppy came home so there wasn't a lot of new change the day the puppy came home, if that made sense. The next thing I did happens about three to five days before puppy comes home. And that was to mentally and physically exercise and stimulate my two dogs for at least 20 to 30 minutes a day for at least three to five days before puppy comes home. Obviously, I would hope that you're exercising your dog every day, but just in case I know it's a lot of preparation, getting ready for a new puppy, hi Wally. And so just make sure that at least three days or more before that puppy comes home, you're really spending quality one-on-one -on -one time and and practicing those basic focus behaviors on you and with, with you and your dog because that's gonna come in handy when you get the new puppy and you really wanna make sure that your dog's attention is on you and not obsessively on the puppy. So obviously we did physical exercise, we went on walks, we played fetch like we normally do, but we also did some focus stuff. So Finnegan, can you touch? Yes, good boy. I love the touch command because it's a really good way for a dog to become focused on you. We just worked on basic, Finn, can you sit? Yes, Bentley sit. Yes, good boys, yeah. Can you two down? Yes, good job guys. And we just worked again on basic stuff because what that does is it's a friendly reminder to your existing dogs that you guys have a strong bond and listening to results in good things, whether you're rewarding them with treats, play, or praise. And it's really starting to, set, starting to set the precedent that they need to focus on you. And I know with everything going on in the world right now, it's really crazy. So sometimes I do too, I, I, I'm the same way. I'll forget to practice on these basic obedience cues or commands. I had a subscriber ask that I call them cues, not commands. And I thought that was actually good feedback. 
I don't remember who you are, but thank you for saying that. And I wanna make sure, again, that your dogs are not amped up on energy when that new puppy comes home and tiring and working their mind doing, again, basic obedience cues is way more effective in tiring your dog than physical activity. And then when you when you pair the two, when you're physically exercising them, giving them a nice light jog or playing some good structured fetch and, and working their mind, doing brain games, which I do have videos all linked down below on how to do all of those things and some really fun brain game ideas that you can watch after this, that is how you're going to get your dog to be in a really good mental space to be ready to meet your new puppy. And so you're bringing puppy home, you have your baby gate set up, hi Bentley, and what do you do? How do you make the meat? Do you just bring the puppy home and plop them in front of your dog? No, absolutely not. I recommend to start on neutral ground. Sometimes just the front driveway could work, or if you don't have a driveway, let's say you're in an apartment, maybe just in the hallway of the apartment. That way when they meet new puppy, they don't feel like it's entrenching, entrenching, encroaching? I don't know the word, oh my gosh, that's embarrassing, but I'm gonna leave it in this video on your dog's territory. And what I did with Ben and Finn is I had help. So I had Mikey there, my husband, and he had our two boys on a leash and we just walked up and down the street. He had them on a structured heel walk and I just walked outside with the puppy in my arms and it did not draw attention to myself and just held the puppy. And honestly, at first the dogs didn't pay any attention to it. And my husband rewarded with treats, play and praise a crazy amount because what we don't want, although you might want them to be best friends, the fastest way for them to become best friends in my experience is for them not to become overly obsessed with being around each other. So I would just hold the puppy, be in the same area. The dogs could smell them, but they were having fun walking on leash with daddy. Then eventually they came up and sniffed the puppy and I kept the puppy safe and the pup dog safe. Now I will say I'm at a bit of an advantage as you guys know, I have fostered dozens and dozens and dozens of rescue dogs, many of which were puppies. So my boys are used to new puppies coming in. So I, I knew and I was very confident that they'd be fine, but hold that thought because somebody just rang the bell. Do you need to go potty? Okay, let's go. Look at this, guys. He's like, like not even 12 weeks old and he's already ringing the bell. So let's go on a quick potty break because my videos are real life. That's why people I think really resonate with them is this is not a script. I'm literally just showing you how we are training my mom's little floofy pup uh, as we go. All right, tap your kidney. Ta good boy, yeah! Good job, Wallace. Thank you for alerting me. Yes, good job. I do have potty training videos down below for you guys as well because he became potty trained in, gosh, just a couple weeks at most. Okay, let's go back inside and finish. Then we come inside and that's where these baby gates come in handy. So I let the dogs, my dogs, be in the front part of the house so there was safely away from the little puppy. We come inside and what do I do? Do I let the puppy and dog just meet directly? Nope. But what I did was I went to my mom's treat jars. Uh, pro tip when you're training a puppy, try to find some of these easy to open treat jar lids and put them all around the house. I only like single ingredient treats like little freeze dried minnows or freeze dried beef heart. Um, that way they're not full of carbs. And these are really easy to have on hand so you can easily work with your dog and don't have to go rush and grab a bag of treats. Um, I have one there for my mom. I have one there and they're just really easy to open little treat jars. And what I did is when we came inside, my boys would be right here. And hi Wallace, can you sit? Good boy. And obviously we worked on this a bit, but we just worked on giving treats, playing with toys, and working with the puppy so the puppy was focused on me and not the dogs. Good boy, you can free. And I know many of you are gonna say, well, wait, my puppy's only eight weeks old. You want me to start working with them the first day home? Absolutely, you have very low expectations, but there's no reason that you can't start giving them some routine and structure. Puppies are smart, and I know this works for a fact because I've done it dozens of times. And you guys on Instagram, if you're not following me, at Rachel Fasaro, tag me all the time. I just had someone tag me. My seven week old Aussie, or almost eight week old Aussie doodle is already getting into the crate, already doing sits and downs, and they learn that in the first two days of coming home. But again, this is so important because the fastest way in my experience for your dog and your new puppy to get along is by getting them comfortable to coexisting without being obsessed with being right on top of each other. Because again, you want the dogs, the new puppy and your current dogs to be focused on you. You're the valuable resource. You're the thing that feeds them, that loves on them, that gives them a safe, happy home, works with them, etc., and gives them a lot of mental stimulation. And then I do the same thing with my boys, but on the other side of the fence. So we have puppy here who is now tired 
tired because you've taken him or her potty, you've worked with them, you've played with them, and now my boys, I get to work with them. And then I get them to focus on over here so they're you know right near the puppy, not paying too close attention. But we're just gonna come away from the puppy and reward for being away from the puppy. Good job, boys, look at that floofy hair. Good job, and if you guys are wondering, I always get questions like, do they have a bark collar or a shark call, shock collar? And absolutely not, I'm not a fan of those. These are actually Whistle GPS tracking units. I do have a special code for you linked down below on those. Um, this video is not sponsored by them, but I love these because it tracks their activity and makes sure they are safe because it tracks their location. So especially because we travel sometimes or I'm coming to visit my mom, I wanna make sure that if they ever do get out, knock on wood, that they are easily able to be tracked. And guys, this process could take several days, maybe even a week or so. It all depends on your dog. If you have a high prey drive dog or your puppy is just a really timid and needs more time to bond with you, that is okay. There is no need to rush this. You're going to have your new puppy for 15, 20 years, hopefully, maybe even more. You know, what I found is that when you take things slow and steady and you set everyone up for success, you're more likely to be successful and it's okay if it takes a little bit of time. And then what we did with the crate was we would work on crate training. Yes, I worked on crate training day one, week one, and then I would have my boy here and I would allow Finn to sniff him if he want. Now, if the puppy was super timid, we would slow down, but if the puppy seems interested, like Wally looks here and Finn isn't super obsessed with the puppy, we would just work, this is my mom's room, the puppy will sleep next to my mom, that's her bed. Uh, come on Finnegan, we'll just work in the same room as the puppy in the crate. Can you sit? Good boy, can you touch? Yes, good job, and we'll reward that with a treat. And we work on this over and over again with one dog at a time. You see Bentley's over there, and I switch them out. And what this does is it allows the puppy to be in their safe space. Yes, the crate is their safe space, because we've been practicing that. Uh, and observe the big dog working to not be so scared and it keeps everybody safe and gives everybody safe boundaries so the big dog doesn't feel like they're totally just all their space is taken up. Now for the best part, let's have everybody meet. So again, this could happen on day one, this could happen on day three, and that's okay. You guys need to be your dog and your puppy's best advocate. So again, I've made sure that everybody's had their exercise. We've met kind of through the gate. Uh, so what I do before I meet is I make sure all toys, bones, anything of high value to my dogs and or the puppy are picked up and put away, far away, because I don't want there to be any reason for somebody to get upset or possessive, huh? Hi, little I'll one. have my husband or my mom or a friend put our dogs on a long lead, or you could actually do that with the puppy. That way, if anything ever gets out of control, you know, you always have a way to kind of pull them back. I definitely like to do this first five steps I just talked about so that we can avoid that at all cost. but it is a good safety procedure to use a long lead or a leash. And then I just make sure when they meet for the first time, it's not just free roam meet, it is structured meeting. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, come here. Ah, uh -uh, no bite. Okay, sit, good boy. Wally, can you sit? Good boy. Good boy. And so what you see I'm doing there is when I first had the meat, I would work with both of them at the same time. And you may not wanna use treats if your dog is possessive over food, but it's a good way to allow them to work with you, focus on you, not on each other, but be really close to each other. I keep these interactions, their first kind of face-to-face -face interactions short. I do one dog at a time. I make sure that again, everybody is exercised ahead of time. And I also make sure that we end on a positive note. That's so important. If things are a little intense, they start trying to play really ag aggressively, I try to get their attention, redirect them on me, have my husband get Finn's attention, for example, focus on him, I get the puppy's attention, focus on me, uh, and everybody's happy, calm, and then I'll separate them again. If they are kind of going at it, like playing aggressively, and you just pull them apart and put them separate, that's, in my experience, it just, it doesn't set them up for success because they're not ending on a positive note, and that's the last interaction they remember, so it can slow the process down. And when your dogs are in the same area, and they're not obsessive over each other, and they're, oh, we're going number two. <laughs> Good job. Good job, Wally. Hurry, hurry. Uh, that's when you want to reward. A lot of times, and, and I can be guilty of this too, we're so quick as pet parents to reprimand. Like, oh no, don't do that. Pull them away. Say no. Redirect. But a lot of times we forget, and I'm, in, I'm guilty of this too, to reward the behavior when they're doing it right. And sometimes the good behavior is just coexisting and not going crazy over each other. But if they're interacting like this and they're playing nicely and Finn is letting him jump at him, you know, with the ball in his mouth, reward that. Good job, Finn. Good job. He's like, don't take the ball from me. Good job, Finn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, get it. There we go. 
Good job. Again, I don't recommend to have toys out. Oh, get it. Have toys out when they're first meeting, but they now love to play with balls together. I'll insert a clip here on, whoa. <laughs> gets he did in the beginning play a little rough so when he started doing that I got his attention to focus on me and that's why those focus games are so important I talked about before like the touch command um, recall things like that place command which again all that's linked down below because if he started to get play a little too rough because he doesn't know how to play gentle because that's that's my Finnegan for you um, I would just do those things and then when he stopped I would reward big time like I'd be like Finn t-o-u-c-h when he was starting to pounce a little too heavy and he came to me you better believe he got a jackpot whether that was treats play or praise again it's all about rewarding the behavior that you want and so right now will be a great time to reward because he's playing with his toy not paying too much attention with the puppy good job Finnegan yes good job not being too rough not being aggressive oh good job sharing his toy sort of and good job and then if you see the puppy getting a little too aggressive okay look Wally pop up touch Yes, good job. Oh, the sun. <laughs> good job, Wally. Good job. And so I'm really glad that he did that because even now they, they sometimes will just start going at it and Wally has no fear. And I just redirect and it's sometimes you have to separate and that's totally fine. And also remember, overstimulation is a real thing, especially for young puppies, but even your own dog. And time apart is key. Time apart and quality time with you and your dog and time apart and quality time with you and your puppy are all very, very important. So everybody feels equal, everybody feels loved, everybody feels important, but giving that time apart, whether you have the puppy in their crate for a little while or your dog in their crate for a little while and give them a rest, like if you think, see things kind of escalating too quickly, giving separate time can sometimes help. And again, don't forget the power of exercising your dog really well before the interaction. Now, if you guys wanna see what we're feeding Wally and my favorite kind of food for dogs, click the video right here. Or if you wanna see my one-step potty training process, click the video right here and I'll meet you over there. And I hope you have a beautiful Beautiful day, goodbye!